Well, thank, thank you. I'm actually not going to try and sum up what's gone on because my brain is still spinning, but I will take uh, just five minutes to give a, a preview of what's, what's coming up. And I'll go quickly because we've touched on a lot of the, uh, the topics. Uh, some of you who were um, at the convention in Barcelona four years ago may remember that I sort of set out this uh, sort of schematic as a description of a vision, really, of a successful travel industry and the challenges that that brings. And I'll just go through it very quickly because it does help us sort of organize at ABTA anyway, uh, you know, our activities. So it starts and ends with successful businesses. That's our raison d'etre as an association. And, uh, you know, creating an environment where, uh, you know, shareholders and destinations want to continue to invest. And, you know, for that to be the case, we have to have a high quality product. We have to have confident customers, both in buying it and experiencing the product. You know, we want destinations to be getting an economic return so they continue to invest and all the time managing the environmental and social impact of tourism uh, in those destinations. Uh, we want to be seen as an industry that uh, can create jobs both in the UK and in destinations. And we're prepared to pay our fair share of tax, a fair share. Uh, we want to, as a successful industry, make that contribution. And uh, you know, we want to be communicating with all of our stakeholders uh, about what we're doing and, and how valuable travel is. And, you know, APTA at the heart of that, sort of helping, helping us to uh, meet some of the challenges. This is actually, it was four years ago, but it stood the test of time, actually. The, you know, the challenges that the industry faces do sort of follow this, this cycle. Some things have gone uh, very quickly in those four years. Uh, technology uh, clearly has, has moved ahead very rapidly. Uh, Nigel's demos now work, which is uh, quite a, uh, a step forward. And it was very interesting to me yesterday listening to the discussion about distribution, how the people's strategic thinking about how they're going to manage multi-platform uh, approaches to customers has also become much more sophisticated over that period. But some, some of these challenges are longer term, uh, and over the next 12 months we'll be, we'll be pushing on with those. Part of the quality product for all of us is uh, the airport experience, and uh, you know, it's very important that we have the, the capacity and the resilience within our infrastructure. Uh, APTA has been very prominent in the Davis Commission in particularly representing the position of the leisure sector that we're not overlooked um, in, in discussion about hubs with too much focus on business travel and we'll be uh, making sure that we, we keep tracking that and we get a solution that works for us uh, at the end of what's going to be a long political process. Uh, confident customers, uh, we've talked about package travel directive. Um, I was talking to a journalist at the welcoming party who said every time she hears the word package travel directive, her brain goes numb. And I, a little bit of me sympathizes, but it is, impo it is important and uh, it is going to have a pretty fundamental impact on shaping not just the customer experience, but people's business models. And of course, alongside that, the government's looking at how it shapes the Atoll scheme, which is a major pillar of implementation in the UK. So, uh, you know, they're moving quite you know, slowly at the Brussels pace, but uh, there's a lot that's going to happen over the next 12 months in shaping that. Noel mentioned yesterday, you know, we do a lot of work with destinations. Uh, it's been um, a very busy year for our destinations team, working with some uh, tricky situations. Egypt is an example, where we liaise very closely with the destination government and with our own foreign office to try and keep the, uh, you know, the arteries of, of tourism open. Uh, you know, sadly, that's definitely going to continue, not just with Egypt, but there'll be other places this year. So I anticipate more uh, sort of either geopolitical or economic upsets that we have to manage. Um, we are, as an industry, I think, making strides uh, towards a sustainable future. Uh, Malcolm Preston yesterday we sort of pointed out that blue box in the bottom right-hand corner where we all have to try and aim at, which is sort of high standard of livings within the limits of the Earth's capacity. Um, the, uh, the, you know, the Federation of Tour Operators as well, and now APT on a more broadly basis, has, has developed tools to help people uh, be sustainable. Travel life is a good example where the industry has come together, not in a competitive way, but to try and come up with a common system of sustainability audit and accreditation and improvement. And you know, I'm delighted that this hotel actually has just been awarded a Gold Travel Life Award, uh, which is only the second in Croatia, but we now have 1,300 subscribed and committed hotels, and we're going to continue to push that through next year. Um, I was very pleased that Julia and others on that panel mentioned the, the career and the skills element of our industry. Um, I think this, you know, to, candid, to be candid, this is a section where we haven't made as much progress as I, I would have hoped uh, four years ago. 
We've, we've done good research about um, you know, the, what the outbound sector brings in terms of employment and what leisure aviation brings, but I'd really like to see us over the next year digging deeper into what kind of skills the industry needs, be able to make sure that we're working with universities and colleges to provide that stream, and then also careers within the industry. And I think that's very important as we go into a, uh, a pre-election year when people are writing their manifestos that we can demonstrate the job creation and the career creation potential of our industry. And uh, we'll be not only trying to influence the three political parties, uh, political manifestos, but we'll be having our own statement of what we want future governments to do. And that does bring us you know, to the issue of tax fair and square. Alistair mentioned you know, the VAT situation, which is absolutely key. I can assure him and others that we are on top of that. We've got working parties and we're shadowing that extremely closely. And there's no doubt it is a, a very sensitive issue for, for all sorts of our members. And of course, uh, air passenger duty, um, which uh, people say, well, why, you know, you're not gonna win, so you know, why bother? But for me, you know, air passenger duty is, is an arm wrestle with the government and if we relax you know, our knuckles will be on the tabletop because they will take more and more so we just have to keep the pressure up on that. And then lastly you know, we, we do want to continue to promote APTA membership and the industry. Uh, we've had a good year this year in our Look for the Logo campaign to drive consumers to look for the APTA badge and APTA members and we'll be ramping that up next year as well. So a very rapid, you know, we're, we're a sort of tour of the horizon as to what's coming up. So that's it. We have a, a busy year ahead. We will be reporting back at very regular interviews through our many channels, uh, but not least uh, in 12 months' time uh, when I look forward to seeing you here. And, uh, and I wish you, in the meantime, all success in building your own successful business. Thank you.